So I have recorded this at least 20 times. Um, and this is just, I'm just going to go through this right here and whatever it is, it is. Um, because I'm tired of talking about it and I'm tired of recording it. I'm really exhausted right now. This has been um, around three hours of attempting to record this. This is like attempt number 21. So um, I really want to start by saying hello, missed y'all. Um, and just this is a very serious conversation today. Trigger warning. Um, we are going to be talking about sexual assault today. Uh, I want to first start by saying that I know that sexual assault happens to all people. Uh, there is no specific group that has been spared sexual assault. And so by me focusing on one aspect within this community, I don't want it to seem like this is the only group that it happens to, but I am speaking to what I feel is my experience and my community. Also, this is a very unique experience. African American, ex inter African -American interpreters um, first have a different relationship with living history and interpret historical interpretation than white interpreters. It is just a fact of life. If you are black in America, the way you move through this world is completely different. And so I think that the solutions to the problems are not going to be a one size fits all. It has to be specific to the group. And uh, first and foremost, I think that there is a desperate need right now for there to be um, policies put into place um, that will directly support all women and men at historical sites that have had any type of harassment or sexual assault. Um, today I'm going to talk specifically about my experience as a historical interpreter in costume at a large historic site. So I worked at a large historic site. I was very excited when I started. Um, I thought that this would be the last job I would ever have. I thought that I would retire from the, my position at that one site. Uh, but within two months, I knew that that would not be the case. So I, it started um, as soon as I started working in costume at a specific site. My worst experiences were really only at one site during a certain time of day. And that was when I was doing security um, in that specific building, which meant that I followed uh, tour groups through as my between my tours I would help my colleagues by following their groups through and closing doors behind them and making sure any stragglers got in um, to the tour um, because sometimes people stop to take pictures and get lost in the buildings uh, and so I was there to make sure that no one got lost and they knew where their group was um, but sometimes people would come out from the group into the hallway where I was standing and it was a dark hallway um, and usually they would sit down in chairs um, usually these are elderly people and I, I've ha I had great conversations with many of them uh, sometimes pregnant women I mean it's a lot of walking um, at the site so um, they would sit down and speak with me and I give them some advice of where they could go next but sometimes other people would come out and usually I would try to convince them to go back into the tour uh, just because I didn't want them to miss anything because usually later they'd be like, oh, I, miss, I miss that information. Um, and it's really a full experience to help you really understand um, the entire site. You have to get like every piece of information. So sometimes um, men would come out 
usually it would be either hitting on me or touching me in some form or fashion um, and sometimes saying really racist things to me. So at one point, one man grabbed my breast, uh, another man grabbed my butt um, multiple times. Uh, and sometimes when I would say that's inappropriate, do not touch me, um, they would just flat out lie. Things were said like, uh, they let us pay to shoot the guns, well they let us pay to whip the slaves. Uh, the man of the house is very lucky having you just down in the quarters. No wonder there are a lot of mixed children running around here with you here. And so this would continue. So imagine uh, an incident like this one or two times a week um, and constant. So, so I, I have to say that when this, these incidents started, I never called security. I did not, uh, I called security once when I was um, really kind of attacked by a woman um, while I was on security, but I, other than that, I never called security and it wasn't until like the fourth incident that I told a manager. When I told the manager um, and all the incidents that happened thus far, she seemed very empathetic um, and very worried um, and but she did say that something stuff like this had never happened at that site before and she not she'd never heard of it happening at the site before and so I was kind of like so it's just me I'm the only person that this has happened to so um, fast forward a bit let's say a few months in by this point I had been regularly telling my co-workers when I came off of security at first they seemed sympathetic but eventually they started calling into question my story my honesty uh, my and my integrity um, and saying this can't be true because it's happening so much to you then why is it ha not having happening to anyone else so fast forward a little bit further um, eventually another black interpreter opened up to me and said uh, that stuff like this had happened to her on security at the same spot fast forward to after I left that historic that organization and I contacted two other black interpreters who had worked at that specific site and I didn't tell them my story at all and surprise surprise they had the exact same story as I did almost word for word almost at the exact same spot that I had my experiences in I think now I would handle that a lot differently and hell yeah I would call security but when you are in that position and in that moment a lot of the times you freeze that is what I did a lot of times I just froze and I was very slow to action but that's just my experience that's what happened to me and that's how I reacted that is how my body reacted and I constantly felt like management managers and administration was pointing the finger down and saying we weren't doing enough to prevent this from happening eventually they added some signage or other literature that basically said please do not touch the interpreters <sighs> but I don't think that it actually did anything I understand that in this field guests will be crappy that's just a fact of 
interpretation. There are going to be some crappy guests. I have had wonderful, awesome guests. Um, I have had wonderful memories with um, guests at historical sites, but I have also had horrible experiences. And I am trained and able to deal with it. And as it arises, my issue is that these sites have no support for interpreters. I know for a fact that African American interpreters, after they enter this field, are suffering from anxiety and depression and other uh, mental health problems that come about after they start working in the field. I think that it's very important that sites provide support for uh, African American interpreters and very specialized support. I'm working with a lot of sites right now to help with that, to help support their staff, uh, get that one-on-one -on -one, so, one -on -one support that African American interpreters need. They need to be told that these experiences are real, you are not making this up, this is not a figment of your imagination, you are just seeing things, what you see is real. And to have people say that maybe you're imagining it, it's very toxic to the mind and to the soul. So there are two phases. There is really caring for the interpreter, interpreter themselves, like making sure that they're getting therapy. And I think that historical sites should start providing some sort of support, whether it is uh, connecting them with other black interpreters um, or connecting them with a therapist. Um, I, I personally believe that when you have black interpreters, only another black interpreter will know exactly what they're going through. I want to end by saying I absolutely love my job. When I left that large historic site, I was a mess. I got wonderful therapy. I went to a retreat um, that really fed my soul and my heart. I'm so glad that I had that experience, but not everyone is as lucky and as privileged as I am to have had those experiences and to be able to get therapy. Um, so I think that is first and foremost probably the most pressing matter right now for black interpreters, making sure that everyone is getting some sort of therapy, first therapy, and then contacting and getting support from other black interpreters. And then also, um, each person is unique and they have different needs, um, but I think that uh, just asking them, what do you need and how can I help you? Uh, and giving them time to figure that out. Sometimes when you ask someone what they need, they don't even know at, the, at that moment what they need. So giving them time to even figure that out. And then when they tell you, please be upfront if that is something that cannot be done. Do not give lip service and saying, oh, we can do that eventually. Uh, just be very realistic. so much for watching. I want to give a special thanks to my patrons from Patreon who make all this possible. I can speak out and say this because of your support. Thank you so, so much. Um, if you would like to become a patron, uh, please follow the links down below to uh, my Patreon page. Um, and please make sure you're following me on social medias. Uh, so that's Instagram, Natural Mama's History, um, Twitter, I'm never on there, but I promise I'll start trying. <laughs> and um, please remember to subscribe, to like us and subscribe. Uh, please mash the bell next to the subscribe button so that you can actually get notifications of when I'm uploading stuff. Um, thank you so much for joining us today uh, for this video.